so hello everyone let's maybe or maybe should we start now okay so yeah it's 32 so hello everyone uh welcome to our horizon weekly insider number nine um happy thursday very very um pleased to be here today and as well and as usual uh please remember that the recording of this call will be available on our Boat Horizon um, podcast and our YouTube channel. And also, please remember to ask your questions on the Menti uh, while this call is happening so we can answer at the end. And without further ado, let's start with the engineering department. Luca, if you would like to go ahead. Thank you, Angie. Hello, everybody. Luca from Milano, Italy. Today, I'll start with the uh, Zendi updates as uh, we have uh, the precation set for uh, October 26th. So we are working on the release of a new Zendi software. It's uh, known as uh, 2.0.19, and it's going to replace the current one, 2.0.18. So as I was mentioning, the current software is going to deprecate towards the end of this month, and that's why we are preparing a new one. And the focus of this version is uh, mainly mindedness, let me say, including improvements like uh, new DNS seed nodes for testnet and mainnet, uh, updated OpenSSL dependency, but moreover, Zcash is fixed for vulnerability uh, CV 2018-17048, which is also known as ping, has been included in this release. So despite the short window available, we were able to include it in the code. All our partners, exchanges, pools, node operators, and full node wallet users will have to update. That's why we have prepared, uh, let me say, a blog post draft uh, that the marketing team posted yesterday on, uh, on our blog. And uh, Angie is also starting notifying all our partners and exchanges today. So we decided to run three rounds of notifications as usual, like uh, last times. Uh, and today the first one is happening. The release is scheduled to be published on GitHub uh, potentially already tomorrow, in the worst case on Monday, and we will also publish binaries on uh, on Monday. For what regards sidechains, this week was very intense as tons of code was reviewed by Alberto, and I'm referring to many different project components, like the WebSocket, but also the main chain changes to support sidechains and so on. Uh, the great news here is that we are almost over with code review, so soon we will be able to start the very final activities related to the alpha milestone, which means uh, uh, porting the code to public and releasing it to the world. Moreover, earlier this week, we recorded the video that shows all the amazing progress we are releasing, where Alexandra uh, in particular uh, shows us how to start a main chain node in Rectest, then bootstraps a new sidechain, retrieves some information from the main chain, starts another node, which is a sidechain node using the SDK code, demonstrates that there is a connection between main chain and sidechain with a forward transfer, and then shows that the sidechain received the new coins, and finally uses those coins in sidechain for basic uh, operations. So it's a very cool video, and can't really wait uh, it to be released. Uh, that's it from me, and I would say also from uh, engineering. So uh, back to you, Angie. Thanks, Luca. Next one would be Chronic on the infrastructure side. Yeah, hello, everybody. Um, no concrete updates this week. Um, I'm just uh, working here in Milan together with uh, Mac on an infrastructure workshop uh, to uh, really go over node tracking infrastructure um, and uh, it's pretty much just um, education of the team and we're refining some procedures and um, maintenance tasks, automating a lot of things. Um, and yeah, the ZD release is uh, pretty much ready. Code is, uh, is frozen and we're just uh, doing some final tests and uh, binaries will be available on Monday, like Luca said. Thank you, Chronic. Uh, next one would be Alan on the node side. Yep. Hello, everyone. Uh, I've been working on the roll-up of the earnings for the secure and super node tracking system so that we can um, roll them up into a weekly payment instead of doing individual payments for each day. 
And I'll be moving that out onto TestNet and testing it um, this week and figure out when we can deploy after that, uh, perhaps the end of the month, beginning of next month sometime. That schedule needs to be worked out yet. That's it for now. Thank you, Alan. Next one would be Gustavo on the UX side. Hey, everyone. So we'll start with the help desk update with Spencer. Hello, everyone. Uh, if you scroll up to the 1056, uh, well, that's East Coast uh, in the Weekly Insider channel, you'll see the metrics for the help desk. Briefly, we currently, at that snapshot, had 27 items open, one waiting for support. We had 18 items waiting for the customer. Uh, the extraordinary success that uh, the faucet marketing campaign has generated has also been reflected in the amount of traffic on the help desk. We currently are carrying about 20 user reviews for the past seven days. A typical week would have two or three. So uh, thanks to the um, faucet for generating a lot of traffic on the help desk. And uh, thankfully, we've been able to help people um, a very high percentage of the time. That's the for this help desk. OK, mm -hmm. thanks, Spencer. On the development side for Sphere desktop version, we are working towards a new build for the upcoming depreciation. On the web development, uh, we've been working pretty much nonstop on the faucet, just refining it and make it more robust. Also making some changes based on uh, community and user feedback and some internal analysis. Uh, we are also working on the HD project for uh, with along with Jonas, and that's everything for now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Gustavo. Next one would be Rowan on BD side. Good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first up, Vano, thank you very much for that introduction you just made. Um, that's really, really useful for the guys in Slovenia. Really great work there. Hopefully, that pans out to be something fruitful. Um, on my side, Operation Balboa, which is kind of our local outreach here in Panama, is full steam ahead. The BD machine is churning really, well, really, really well. Uh, Aldo and I have a pretty decent pipeline of really interesting meetings in the next two weeks with a variety of businesses of all different sizes, um, which we'll be speaking about in more detail once that's kind of happened. Uh, we have also secured a couple of speaking slots for both Rob and I at a blockchain for business type conference, which is going to be in Panama next month. On the integration front, uh, we have a variety of different table deals we're currently evaluating to try and figure out what provides best possible bang for buck, given the current Zen price. And on the 2.0.19 front, I'm right in the middle of putting out the notifications. I'll provide an update as soon as we get a positive confirmation from uh, Binance, Bittrex, and Huobi uh, to both Luca and Angie. And that's pretty much the main things for me right now, uh, or at least the main things I can actually talk about publicly. Uh, I will add uh, things. So uh, it's Vano speaking from Georgia Tbilisi. I am uh, preparing for the Chainpoint conference. Uh, which will be uh, in Armenia, Erevan, uh, on Monday and uh, Tuesday. I will be traveling there uh, on this weekend. And then we have uh, an upcoming Students for Liberty conference, a large one in November in Tbilisi, Georgia. And I have approached, uh, approached guys for uh, booth or uh, speaking um, the possibility. Last year we had a booth there and uh, it was a great success and uh, we will see what we can extract from there. That's all from me. Back to you, Angie, or other BD representatives. Thanks, guys. Uh, and now, join us with the HDA project. Hey, everyone. Uh, saying hi from the Milan office roof. Um, so today we went through the uh, Zen IP process again. Um, currently, two out of three Zen IP editors are in one location, so that made a lot of sense. Also got some buy-in from the engineering team, which is quite important. Um, I will put together a little blog post sooner than later to um, fill everybody in on the process that is not uh, keen to read the full specification. 
other than that, um, as Gustavo already mentioned, working with the UX team for a, a workshop for MLH that uh, we talked about in previous up. And um, lastly, I was made aware that um, coming up with some KPIs for the um, HDE would be a good idea. Thanks, uh, Liat. So that's something that I will um, that I will think about in the next couple of days and try to come up with realistic expectations of what we want to achieve with that with that platform. So that's it from my side. Back to you, Angie, and have a good day to everyone. Bye bye. Thanks, Jonas. Next one is Lucy on the marketing side. Hello, everyone. Uh, so, uh, like Luca mentioned, communications about the Zen 2.0 point. Uh, 19 started yesterday. Uh, the deprecation will occur around October 26th. So we will send out reminders between now and then. Um, and then also the QA, uh, I'm sorry, to, uh, Q3 2019 report was also published uh, last week. Uh, it summarized our, uh, our activities and uh, accomplishments in the past three months. So uh, check it out if you have not uh, done so. And then we will be posting the next blog post uh, about our site chain development. Uh, by the end of this week. Um, and then I uh, just really want to highlight our uh, exponential growth in our social media performance, both the, the uh, uh, community size and engagement uh, has uh, increased greatly recently, uh, mainly thanks to our new faucet. Uh, Jonathan will talk about it more. Uh, so for example, our uh, the Twitter follower just hit 30,000 and it's still uh, growing really uh, rapidly, uh, and then um, uh, you know uh, also uh, it, it, uh, traffic to our websites and then all of our other uh, online estates all increased by a lot. And then uh, due to the increase of traffic and users to the faucet, we also received a large number of questions and feedback from the the faucet user. So uh, thank you uh, the help desk for handling all the tickets, uh, and then uh, uh, also Erica for. Uh, uh, responding to uh, uh, to uh, uh, so many questions uh, every day in a, in a you know a timely manner, so uh, that really plays a huge part in providing a good customer service. Uh, and then speaking of uh, Erica, uh, she will be uh, um, she will be out of office uh, until the twenty until the twenty sixth, I believe. Uh, she's going away for her honeymoon. So please go, don't contact her during the summer and I will be her backup. Um, and I'll keep it short and then I'll pass this to Jonathan. Thank you. Hey, Lucy, can you hear me okay? Yes, very clear. Okay, good. A quick update. We're actually at 32,500 Twitter followers now. So we've surpassed that 30,000. So super excited about that. Uh, just a little recap for the community. I know we went over this on Monday, uh, but uh, as Lucy mentioned, we're seeing some really big growth um, uh, all over the place. So our main website, for example, reached almost 2,000 uh, visitors in, in one day, which is um, about um, almost 10 times the normal. Uh, the same with Academy. We're seeing huge visitor growth um, in Academy, and we're getting a lot of conversion on that web page, which we never saw before. We've seen an explosion in Sphere by Horizon downloads. So, um, you know, at the peak, we actually had more downloads in one day than uh, the previous two or three weeks combined. And that was just in a single day. Our, our Twitter growth was uh, stagnant, and now it has just exploded. Actually, if you take a look at the Twitter, our, our pinned tweet, which is about the Q3 2019 review, has 462 likes and 300 retweets. I'm pretty sure uh, that's a record for, for this company. Um, we're also seeing um, enormous growth in terms of conversion. People, basically people who are so interested in the product that they're downloading our white papers and subscribing to our newsletter. And... Um, yeah, so, you know, a lot of really good stuff. And the, the thing that I mentioned on Monday is we haven't even done any marketing yet for this, for the new faucet. So once we really stabilize the infrastructure and uh, we put the pedal on the gas, I think this will, this will, this is just going to be the start. 
So one of the things I'm working on now is, you know, we really have to revamp our welcome email to the community. It wasn't meant to be sent to, you know, 6,000, 10,000 new users a day. So I'm working on revamping it, making it much more simple, much more fluid, and trying to customize it to to this new audience uh, that we have. Um, that's pretty much what I'll be working on this weekend for the rest of the weekend. And that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan and Lucy. So now, uh, Rosario with Product and Engineering. It's great to hear, Jonathan, that you have a work-life work balance. Uh, so <laughs> I'm joking on that. But I, I did want to piggyback on, on Jan Jonathan and the marketing team. You guys have been doing a fantastic job. And the last couple of years have just been creating the foundation. So creating our, our brand, creating our assets, creating our messaging. And now it's... Uh, perfect opportunity and love seeing the exponential growth so i know that you you had your your market growth target uh and now you've exceeded that and now i'm looking forward to the new new target so cool. congratulations to you guys yeah rob told me i can't sleep until i get to a, a hundred thousand or four <laughs> so twitter followers so you know i'm just trying to get some sleep here Okay, well, you could join uh, Chronic on the No Sleep campaign, but uh, so, but no, no, you guys have to take care of uh, each other because this is a, uh, it's it's a race, but it's it, we need to be able to just keep going and uh, so do sleep a little. Uh, but anyway, so I, <laughs> I'm here in in Milan, and it, the energy is just explosive uh lots of great discussions and uh talking to uh the engineering team about our our product and it's just been great to to see that uh collaboration amongst uh, different team members that have been here uh so we are uh near com uh, great news we are near to complete to uh, bring our engineering team to build our engineering team uh, so we have a new candidate that is starting uh, very soon. He's uh, C++. We also have another Java dev that's going to be starting as well. And I, we believe that we are actually, we have probably one or two more uh, individuals to hire. And that is we have a complete team. So uh, we're looking to hire a an in-house cryptographer that is going to be supplementing our third-party uh, cryptographers that we are working with. And uh, so that's uh, is a great news uh, for us. So, um, Luca, you, you mentioned about Zendi because that's immediate, but we've also are near completion for Sidechain Alpha. And that is an incredible milestone. So we're really excited to have that. So I've been uh, working with the various teams on the campaign cycles for that and the, the communication. So, uh, Jonathan, I know you and I need to talk about messaging and bringing in Rob and Liat for that. So uh, we'll be discussing that later. Thank you. Thanks, Rosario. And now for the leadership closing thoughts, please, uh, Rob. Cool. Thank you, Angie. Um, okay, so this is an absolutely huge month for us at Horizon. So we've got the, the sidechain alpha release. We're targeting the 21st of October. Uh, this will be accompanied with the release of a new white paper, same day, uh, and uh, a big promo campaign around that. So we uh, um, filmed uh, basically a video series that the team's editing right now, uh, compiling to release uh, in co coordination with that. Everything from talking about really where we stand as a project, that big picture, to uh, you know overview of the sidechain model or system itself, all the way into the weeds of hey, let's look at how to launch a side a sidechain. Uh, so really cool stuff. Um, I think very comprehensive. We have um, let's see, so we have um, actually a, a very nice investor dinner scheduled in New York at the end of the month. Um, uh, hosted by Grayscale and Horizon Labs. So very excited for that and very grateful to the team there putting that together. Um, the faucet is something that uh, I, I'm extremely excited about. I, I know we make really, uh, really uh, fun and interesting technology, but these types of campaigns where you 
use small incentives in the right way that just spark viral growth uh, it are absolutely um, you know, priceless. And what we're doing now is we're extending, we're going to be extending lessons learned from here into other uh, marketing campaigns. Uh, and I, I just love the recipe here. And, and for us internally or as a team, uh, we're really getting our organization uh, structures so that we can really do these things uh, more rapidly in the future. Um, let's see, and a little bit of, uh, or some really nice, exciting news from the academic front. We have Two new partnerships, one brought to us um, by Angie at, with Tech de Monterey. So uh, I would say, and Angie, correct me if I'm wrong, but probably the best technical university in Mexico uh, and working with the innovation department there on um, a PhD program that we would uh, sponsor jointly with them where we can actually uh, do research projects with faculty and students. Uh, so I, I think really good for a long-term pipeline and just new ideas and flushing out um, you know, new uh, threads of research that could be uh, very lucrative for the ecosystem. Another, another really big academic partnership is with the University of Salerno here in Italy, uh, with actually uh, one of the, the most prolific cryptographers in Italy, uh, Professor Ivan Visconti, uh, and his uh, cryptography group. So doing some heavy R&D there. He's actually coming to the office next week, and we'll discuss uh, some, you know, projects that we'll be working jointly. Now, um, Last bit that I want to talk about here is that we, we know that we're in an extremely volatile market environment. Uh, we are nearing the end of a year. So basically what you're seeing now that um, you know, what we're delivering in a couple of weeks is the culmination of probably a year's worth of R&D to you know, prototyping to you know, building a, a system that we can at least you go to market with uh, on testnet with an alpha, but it, it is the culmination of a lot of work. And we have, we have basically annual strategy cycles where we need to prioritize, uh, you know, projects, prioritize roadmap items, and then resource projects. Uh, we are coming to the point where we're going to have to start thinking about 2020 priorities and, um, you know, what we're going to uh, fund in terms of roadmap. Now, of course, uh, fundamentally what needs to happen is that roadmap, uh, or strategy goals have to, um, you know, be matched with resource reality. Uh, and we know that the price of Zen is at an all-time low, so our, our resources are quite constrained. So in this environment, and more will be forthcoming, but we have to very clearly uh, define a strict set of extremely high priorities uh, and commit to funding these, you know, basically no matter what. And, you know, uh, in, in this set of things, and just... Very quickly, and again, a, a more formal, uh, truly, a roadmap will come out. But the things that I'm thinking we have to commit to, no matter what, would be infrastructure. We clearly need to keep systems running, uh, so very high priority there. Maintaining current software, absolutely high priority. Um, and then side chains. So in terms of technology innovations, we're going to continue, um, you know, pressing forward with the side chain technology, going from the alpha demonstration here to you know. Uh, a, a, uh, production level system that we can switch over to mainnet, I think is absolutely critical for our strategy as a project. So we're going to continue with that. And then of course, community awareness and, and the growth marketing stuff that we're doing, I think absolutely critical. We have to keep communicating to the community what we're doing and we have to keep growing that community. Um, so this would be kind of a, a skeleton framework of how we would structure a roadmap uh, going into 2020. Um, you know, that said, very exciting time for the project, and we'll see how things work out over the next couple of weeks. Uh, guys, stay tuned. We have a very exciting software delivery. And with that, Lucy, if you want to open it up to questions. Yeah, so we've got quite a few questions. And so the top question is, could you please uh, detail revenue model for the super nodes after sidechain release? Will there be a sidechain host fee or additional trends? transaction passing fee will we have more types of nodes for side chains i'm so sorry i think there are like three or four questions <laughs> in this one thing no problem i'm, I'm sure my answer will, will go in five different directions but uh, it's funny <laughs> we just had this conversation uh with alberto and marisa on the team here uh, earlier today 
um, talking about you know fee structures and and just the node system itself. So initially, nothing is going to change in terms of uh, you know uh, super nodes. Uh, really, any type of composite, you know, secure node, super node still has uh, you know ten percent of the block reward allocated to it, and this is really designed as a network subsidy to grow out the network and to have a, a large set of machines available that can now run, you know, choose to run sidechain software. Um, now, uh, all of these nodes, I, I think, because we are subsidizing at the network level, um, have a really good incentive now to start running sidechain software. And then from there, there is uh, a diversion of fees. So transaction fees basically uh, on the sidechains will also go to uh, uh, nodes that choose to run that software. So um, beyond that, we haven't de determined, you know, like magnitude or specific levels of what these transaction fees would look like. From a theoretical perspective, we envision a, a sort of fee marketplace uh, where, you know, application developers or those that initialize sidechains will be uh, choosing the fees that they want to operate in the network and hopefully choose them in a way that is competitive to induce people to actually host their software. So hopefully that answers the question. Thank you, Rob. Um, the second one is, is a mobile version of Sophia by Horizon in the pipeline? It sure is, yeah. Uh, so we're, we're going through, um, so probably the, the final, final round of development for it. And I was talking to Rosario about this, uh, how we would roll this out to the community uh, last night. And I think what we're going to do is, uh, we're going to try to move quicker on uh, releasing an early early candidate or having an early uh, candidate release to uh, the community to test and try to include the community more on the testing side and provide like a, a nice uh, you know incentive um, you know a program to do that in a way that I think it can be fun and and also just involve more community members. So yes, the uh, the answer is we for sure have mobile in works and. Um, I don't know if Rosario, you want to commit to an actual release date that for that one. I don't. I don't suspect you would. Not not on the spot like that. But yes, I'm excited to. Uh, what I was thinking is, uh, rather than us having an extended testing cycle, adding the community and and getting that direct community feedback on the on mobile would be fantastic. Cool. Thank you. Anything else, Lucy? Yeah, thank you both, uh, uh, Robin Rosario. So someone saw something about pot uh, potential free node hosting if you stake twenty four, uh, sorry, forty two zen. Is this something you're considering? For sure. In fact, why don't I hand this over to Jonathan to talk about um, potential campaign on that one? Hey, yeah. So uh, one of the things that we're considering again is this whole theme of how do we incentivize the community to be more involved in the project? And one of the ideas that we're circulating is giving first time node operators um, a couple of months of free hosting. Uh, that way they get a sense of what it's like to set up a node or what it's like to have a node, what it's like to work with one of our vetted node providers. And we, we're, we want to test this on a small scale to start. And if it's successful and we see that the com community is responsive, then I think this is something that we would probably roll out on a larger scale. So this is just one of many new incentives that we're planning to introduce to the community. Thank you, Jonathan. These are the top three questions for the day. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, stay tuned. We do have some big stuff in the on the horizon. But not sleeping. <laughs> Jonathan, you, you can sleep when we actually hit that 100,000 uh, mark. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Have a great Thank day. You guys. Bye, guys. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 B